Are you ready? Yes. Should be on what? Uh, 1466. 80, right? 1466. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead on you. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this one covers steering column, steering gears. So, steering column, obviously, you know what that is, right? Your steering wheel down to the steering gear itself. Two different types of steering gears. Conventional is like a recirculating ball type. Most of what you see now is rack and pinion. That's what pretty much everything has now. Okay. <coughs> We're going to go through the function of your steering wheel. That's pretty important, right? Yes. What's the function of your steering wheel? It's a turn. <laughs> something, something to hold on to to turn the wheel, right? Okay. How to remove it. Anybody ever removed a steering wheel before? No. I was there, but I didn't do it. Oh, no? yeah. Okay. Steering column, intermediate chest. Uh, a little bit of uh, conventional steering gears, which you don't see much of anymore. That's what they call the recirculating ball type. Rack and pinion is what just about everything has now. Okay. This is going to be part of your content area A or the ASE. Okay. Steering wheel. This is a rigid rim, number of spokes connected to the center hub, attaches to the stop of the steering shaft at its center. And if the car is built within the last 25 to 30 years, it's going to have an airbag, right? Module fits in the front. That secures the steering wheel to the steering shaft. Bolts at the back of the steering wheel. Well, fasten the airbag module to the steering wheel. Talks about airbag just a little bit through here. Okay? It's going to have a driver's side airbag module. It also may include steering wheel controls. Pretty common there, right? Okay, your airbag inflates at the same time the driver moves forward toward the steering wheel in a front end collision. Supplements the protection of the safety belt. Airbags are designed to work with the seat belt, okay? If you don't have your seat belt on, don't depend on the airbag to save you, okay? They're designed to work together. Just because the car has an airbag doesn't mean you can get away with driving without a seat belt, okay? Okay, that's a supplemental restraint. It's not it's not designed to take care of or replace the seat belt, all right? Okay, the airbag module attaches to the steering wheel, removed as an assembly for steering wheel service. So this just comes off as one unit, just unbolt it, unplug it, and it comes out. Those can be replaced pretty easily on most cars. To remove the steering wheel, first thing you have to do is disconnect the airbag wiring at the base of the steering column. Some cars you don't have to unplug at the base of the steering column. You can just unplug it right at the module itself once you pull that off. After you get that off, you remove the steering wheel, retaining that. Good idea to load the, load, note the locating marks on the steering shaft so when you put it back on, it goes on the same way. Some of them are splined with the space in there so you can't get it on wrong. It only fits one way. Not a bad idea to mark it before you pull it off, though. It's going to take a steering wheel puller to get it off. Okay. The reason they do that is if that nut should happen to come loose, the steering wheel is not going to come off. Okay. It's kind of a press fit. When you tighten that nut, it kind of presses it onto that shaft. So once that's tight, you could actually take the nut off and you couldn't pull the steering wheel back off. Okay. They do that obviously for safety reasons. So you can't end up with a steering wheel in your hand while you're driving down the road. <laughs> All right. Most vehicles will have alignment parts made at the factory to make sure the steering wheel goes back in the same spot, like you see there. Typical steering wheel puller. You will have a couple of holes in the steering wheel itself to put these bolts in, and then you got the center bolt that goes right on the steering shaft, you just tighten that up and it pulls the steering wheel off. Some cars, they will recommend pulling the airbag fuse before you disconnect the airbag. Yeah. What's that? Not necessarily. If you pull the uh, airbag fuse, then that system is uh, powered down. So it's easier to pull a fuse and just disconnect the battery a lot of times. So that way you don't power down the whole car. Just the system that you're working on. All right. How is the steering wheel connected to the steering shaft? It just has a nut that holds it onto a spline and tapered shaft. Tapered shaft 
<coughs> is what keeps it tight once the nut is tight. And even if it comes loose for some reason, the other one won't just come off. Right? <coughs> All right, your steering column. The steering shaft will transmit the rotary motion from the steering wheel to the steering gear. Connected by a steering shaft that extends from the steering wheel to the steering gear. It's going to have a couple of universal joints in there because the angles aren't always perfect from the steering wheel to the steering gear. So it's got to, got to make turns in order to get where it's going. So it's going to have a couple of U joints in there typically. We'll have a flexible coupling also, which is a simple device made of rubber reinforced plastic or fabric placed in between the two shafts. It just allows for a change in angle between them. Cover is just basically a cosmetic part to keep you from having to see all of the uh, wiring and the uh, mechanical parts of the steering column. They are collapsible. Federal law requires that the steering column be collapsible in the event of a crash to absorb some of the ener energy so it doesn't take it out on you. Obviously, a lot of steering columns will have a tilt mechanism. Some have a telescopic uh, mechanism too, where you can move the steering wheel closer or farther away from you. On there for the telescoping ones. Construction of them. Construction will vary with the type of dash and the steering system used on the car. So just follow whatever instructions you happen to have for whatever. Okay, here's your U joint. One here, one here. Typically, it'll have two. This will connect down to your steering gear here. Okay, there's a question that's going to come up on the test that refers to this right here. Okay, commonly missed because one of the possible answers is flexible coupling. And since it says that this will allow plunging motion, the actual term for it is the pot joint. Okay. Flexible coupling used to join the two shafts that have a plunging motion. I think one of the possible answers is plunge joint or something like that. So it seems like the obvious answer because sometimes I tell you word association works with tests sometimes. In this case it doesn't. Okay. So don't pick the answer that says plunge joint. Okay. It's the pot joint. That's your flexible coupling. Your intermediate steering shaft showing the U-joint and related components. Just stuff inside there. Most of the time you won't have to deal with anything like that. Okay, this is your flexible coupling that connects your steering shaft to the actual rack and pinion with a pinch bolt. In order to disconnect that, all you have to do is take this bolt out and this will slide up, that steering column will, the, the pieces will slide into each other a little bit so you can actually pull that away from there once you get that bolt off. Steering column, cover, it's just part of your interior trim, nothing new there. Collapsible steering columns include a mesh design that crushes easily, a bearing that allows one section of the column to slide into the other and a breakaway device that separates the steering column from the body of the vehicle in the event of a front-end collision. <coughs> Again, a safety thing to help keep you from getting hurt in the event of a front-end collision. Okay, tilt mechanism, there's not really much to see there. Some will use a ratchet, some will be electric. Okay, what do you see on this one that you didn't see on the other one? What's what's different about this? Tilt pivot pin. What's that? Is the tilt pivot pin flexible? The whole the whole thing there. What's what's different about the that? The steering wheel is a part of it too, but no. okay. <coughs> the torque sensor and gear assembly. Uh, yeah, you're you're there. Where the and, to the power steering motor. Okay. So what's, what's different about this car, or this picture, I should say? Power steering? This is electric power steering. Sometimes on electric power steering cars, the steering power steering motor is right on the steering column. 
Okay, obviously you can't see it's underneath the dash, but sometimes all the power steering motor right on the column. Sometimes it'll be down on the steering gear as part of that. All right. Okay. Steering shaft splines to the steering wheel, which we saw already. Your tow plate, all that does is seal the steering column from the outside of the vehicle when the steering column goes through the car when it's installed. It's got to have something to, to cover that hole, basically. They call that a tow plate. Okay? This keeps out noise and debris from the inside of the car. Okay. So here's basically all the components here from the steering gear, the rack and pinion, all the way up to the steering wheel. Along with your multifunction switch and combination switch, sometimes they call that. That's just your turn signal switch that sometimes will have your lights, wipers, that kind of stuff. Sometimes cruise control uh, buttons, stuff like that. Upper section, again, they're not all the same. Some will have a lock plate or something similar to that. You know, when you turn the ignition off on your car, typically the steering wheel will lock, right? So you, so you can't turn it. Sometimes they'll use a lock plate to, uh, to lock the steering wheel. Okay. This should be an obvious question. Why does the law require a steering column to be collapsible? It's just to help keep you safe, right? Absorb some energy in the event of primary collision. Okay, I'm going to go through the conventional steering gear first. Okay, that's the one that they call the recirculating ball. You won't really see too many of those out there. They still use them on bigger trucks. But for the most part, everything's rack and pinion now. Okay, all steering gears have an input gear which transmits a rotary movement from the steering wheel to the steering gear, output gear. Causes the steering wheel linkage to move laterally so you can turn the wheels. Steering wheel is rotated 20 degrees, results in one front wheels rotating one degree. It's just telling you what a steering 21 steering ratio would be. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm on 1740, and on the picture for the collapsible steering columns, the way it's like mesh, wouldn't that like break if you like turn too hard or like like hit something like it? Like let's say for example. Um, Somebody's getting ready to drive into me, you know, defensive driver, and I turn real hard to get out of the way. Wouldn't that kind of like torque it, or because how thin it is? Let me see, which, which picture are you looking at? Um, right at the top, uh, 1470, where it says collapsible steering column. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <clears throat> wouldn't, wouldn't cause a problem at all. Is that it just, is that how it is by itself? It's like hollow and... Cut out right uh, I've never actually outside. seen the internal there, so I don't know what it looks like. I, I don't know how accurate that drawing is okay. or what. However, I do know this: <laughs> it's not going to, it's not going to break, it's not going to cause any problems, no matter, no matter what you do. Okay. Okay. Your steering and your brakes are the two safest and most well-engineered systems on a car, for okay. obvious reasons. You got to be able to steer it, and you got to be able to stop it, right? So. Those are pretty flawless systems. Okay. Uh, let's see, we went through that. Okay, as the steering wheel is turned on this type of steering gear, nut moves up or down on the threads, showing using a bolt to represent the worm gear, nut representing the gear that messes to the teeth of the sector gear. So this is your sector gear. This is actually attached to the steering shaft and the pitman arm, and that will go to your steering linkage. Okay. This is connected to the steering wheel. So as you turn it, it just moves this back and forth. They're just using that as, a, as an example, what, how, how a nut would slide back and forth on a bolt. Okay. And then just turn that uh, sector shaft. They're just showing you that 20 to 1 uh, steering ratio. If the steering wheels move 20 degrees and the tires move 1 degree, it's 20 to 1. Okay. 
sector shaft and a constant ratio steering gear. Okay? Notice all three teeth are the same size. They do make a variable ratio one, which is probably why they're showing you this, right? A variable ratio, notice what's going on there. One of the teeth is longer than the other, right? It's got a larger center tooth. The only difference between the constant ratio and the variable ratio is there. How's the bonding doing back there? Good. You doing all right? No headache today? Probably no Camaro either, huh? They said I might, well, not might, but I need to be better with the president. They said it's 4,000. Did they, did they get it running? Uh, well, no, nah, it's still at the same shop. Yeah. Really? Yes. I don't know. Well, how can they tell you need a catalytic converter? They wouldn't know that unless the car was running. Uh, for real? Are they just saying I can't tell by looking at it, unless it's physically damaged. Honestly, if they really said you need a catalytic converter, as long as your car's been in the shop, they would have been brought that up. This is something new. <laughs> yeah. He said it might have been fired because of the catalytic converter. No, that's not going to cause mess fire. Well, here's the deal. It's the other way around. If a car misfires long enough, it can damage the catalyst. But they're not going to know that with the car not running. You would have to set a code for it which would be a P0420 or 430, depending on if it's the right or left. So, are they paying for all of this? <coughs> they paying for the rebuild, yeah. Okay. Well, you tell them don't worry about that. Improve the catalytic you, you tell them just to get it running, don't worry about the, if the catalytic converter is actually bad, because they can't tell unless the car's not. So, Okay. <laughs> hey, you want me to go up there and talk to him? I'll take yeah, that fracture credit. Send, send him up there. And I'll take that fracture credit. Said it was big. <laughs> <laughs> Sector gear shaft. Okay, meshes with the gear. Teeth on. They all got. Okay. <coughs> okay, on your recycling ball steering gear. Parts and operation of that. <coughs> The end of the steering gear is the input shaft or the worm shaft, splines to the U joint, provides a rotary input to the steering gear. Has an adjuster plug at the lower end of the worm gear that holds that and the bearings inside. Steel balls roll through tunnels formed by the ball nut grooves and the worm gear thread. Interesting uh, little setup the way those work. That's what it kind of looks like on the inside. Those can, those can be manual or power for a uh, steer. Some of the older cars actually didn't have power steering, if you can believe that. Uh, power steering wasn't just something that every car had years ago. Obviously, you can't get one today without power uh, steering, but that was what, be, what would a manual uh, gearbox would look like at that time. All right. There are a few adjustments that you can do on those. Worm gear preload, gear mesh preload, and sector shaft end play. Yeah? Couldn't you take an older car and like, if you know what you're doing, put power steering into it? Sure. Okay. I've done that before. Okay. I had an older, uh, I had a 69 Firebird for a while. It came from the factory with uh, just a manual steering, you know, no, no power. So I changed the steering gear, put a pump on it, and all the lines and everything, and put power steering on. So yeah, you can do that. You could also take an older car that has this recirculating ball type steering gear and put a rack and pinion on it if you wanted to. Okay, cool. So, yeah. All kinds of things you can do. All right. These adjustments here, um, again, probably mostly informational for you. I seriously doubt you will ever have to disassemble one of these steering gears or do any adjustments on it. Because typically, you don't see them. And if you do and you got a problem with it, You'll probably just take it off, put another one on it, okay? But these are these things you're going to need to know for informational purposes. Worm gear preload. It's the turning force measured in inch pounds called worm in play. It's actual movement in fractions of an inch or millimeters. First step to adjust worm gear free play is at the bottom of that gear nut. They use a thing called a spanner wrench on that. 
designed to fit in the two holes on the nut. Special wrench for that. Okay. Nut has to be tight and measure a half inch. Mark the case. Use the spanner wrench. Rotate the nut counterclockwise a half an inch. Align the marks. Tighten the retaining nut. This procedure gives the proper end play. Hopefully. After it's been done, you can measure that with an inch-pound torque wrench. It should be 6 to 15 inch-pound. If the rotating torque is within the specified range, adjust the over-center adjustment screw until you get 6 to 10 inch-pounds more rotating torque, then tighten the retaining nut. Will you ever do that? Probably not. Sector shaft movement or measurement is how far the sector shaft can move axially. And is measured in fractions of an inch or millimeters. Okay, this is more what you're going to see and uh, more uh, practical as far as something you may do or see. Okay. Again, rack and pinion, almost everything has on it now. Parts of that pinion gear, teeth mesh with the rack so that when the pinion gear turns, it pushes the rack from side to side. The rack connects directly to the tie rod and the steering linkage to move the tires back and forth. Most rack and pinion users use a small metal tube to run alongside the outside of the housing. Connect the two boots to transfer air from one to the other. This is going to show up in the test as well. Okay? What is the metal tube running along the outside of the housing? It's to connect the two boots to transfer air from one to the other. Okay, when you turn the wheel one way, one boot's going to expand, the other's going to collapse. If you turn it the other way, they're going to be do opposite, right? So what happens is it keeps one of them from collapsing and the other one from ballooning. Okay, It'll just allow the air to transfer back and forth to the, to the boots. Okay? A little bit of internals on the rack and pinion. It's simple and direct. Straight line to the front wheels. This is why they call it a rack and pinion steering. There's your two major components right there. Pretty simple idea, <clears throat> and it works very well. Okay, typical manual rack and pinion steering. Again, some cars, especially the smaller ones, um, you could probably still get without power steering, I'm not sure. But either way, you could in some vehicles get the rack and pinion that was not power. The spring loaded rack supports the position <coughs> to the rack to keep it from rubbing its housing, establishes pinion torque. Okay. There's a picture of that little air tube they use to transfer air between them as they extend and compress during turns. You can see that little guy right here. Okay, on the manual rack and pinion, it will mount to the bulkhead or firewall, whereas others mount to the engine cradle or frame of the vehicle. Adjustments on the rack and pinion. There is a couple of adjustments on those. One is pinion torque. It's a measure of how much turning force is needed at the input shaft for the pinion to overcome the resistance of the rack and move it. To provide an adjustable pinion bearing preload, there must be a threaded adjustment mechanism for selective size shims installed behind a shim cover. Pinion torque, that's just the turning force or 
uh, measured in inch pounds again, tightening it against the rack will increase the pinion torque. Pinion bearing preload, turning force required to overcome the resistance of the pinion shaft bearings. As far as uh, rack and pinion adjustments, you probably won't do those either. Um, normally, again, if you have a problem with the rack, it's worn out or it has some sort of problem, more than likely you're going to pull it out and put another one in it. All right? Chances are you won't do any adjustments on it, but you need to know the exact adjustments exist and you know what they're for. All right? To adjust the gear preload, loosen the retaining nut, tighten the adjuster nut until it bottoms out. Loosen at 60 degrees or one flat side of the retainer and then tighten the nut. So you got a retainer and adjuster right there. Retainer nuts just keep the adjustment where you put it so it doesn't loosen up. Okay. What 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 adjustments are possible on that tape? Pinion torque. Pinion torque preload and what's the other one? Pinion bearing preload? Or? Okay. Oh. We're just asking for pinion bearing preload, so we're, get, we're just going to call that good then. Okay. This is starting at 119, that's for this week, okay? 113 to 118 is all you have to worry about for the test of the day, okay? Yeah. You missed some of them, the ones that are sitting there, it's going to be on those too, okay? So you'll need to be studying 113 to 118, okay?
How's it going? Good. I have a quick question before we get to the... You the, do? Yeah. Um, the, on page 1467. Oh, right. Okay. In that little tech tip, the lock-in flyers. Okay. Is that technique, because I've seen it, that's why I'm asking just to make sure, isn't that primarily used for an alignment? where it says the mini vehicles use a jam nut on the tie rod end? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the toe adjustment, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. that's primarily for alignments only. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh -huh. right. yep. I just wanted to make sure. No, nope, you're right. Thank you. shaft is also called the blank shaft. Sector. Sector shaft, yeah. Surely is. Um, question three. Yep. On the 
special breakfast shop, the Santa Gear. Tea is larger than the side here. Yep, it is. Santa Gear tea is larger on a variable ratio sector shop. What part of the variable ratio is there? that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That question was answered in question three, wasn't it? <coughs> okay. Typically is used to allow for changes in angle. Think of the drive shaft. Universal joint. Universal joint, yeah. U joints. Yep. Technician. All right. Technician A says that variable ratio steering is the same thing as variable assist steering. Technician B says that constant ratio shaft and safety gears are the same size. How much assistance with variable ratio steering? Which technician is correct? Uh, both technicians? Mm, negative. Well, then just B? It is just B, yeah. Variable ratio and variable assist are two different things. We'll get to that. Okay. Number seven. Oh, that's me. That um, is you. Technician A says that the front wheels are able to rotate through 60 to 80 degrees of rotation. Technician B says that turning the steering wheel all the way left and all the way right is turning the wheel lock block. Which technician is correct? Both of them? They are both correct. That's what they refer to as lock to lock. Turning the steering wheel all the way one way and then all the way the other way. All right, H. The rotation of the steering wheel causes which part to move the actual steering linkage in a conventional steering gear? actually moves the steering linkage in a conventional steering gear. Mm, it's connected to A, but that's not what it is. Yep. Where do we find that? Stepman arm. Should be on 1471. It says all steering gears have input. Okay, the rotation of the steering wheel is transferred to the front wheel through the steering gear. Okay, the oh. intermediate shaft is flying to a worm gear inside a conventional steering gear. Around the worm gear is a nut with gear teeth that meshes with the teeth on a section of a gear called a sector gear. The sector gear is part of the pitman shaft, also known as the sector shaft. Right here at the next one. Uh, whenever the steering wheel is turned, the pitman arm moves. Mm -hmm. So the pitman arm is actually what connects the steering linkage. But the pitman arm is connected to the second shaft. So, um, in fact, this is the inside of it. This is your That's second the shaft here, right? Underneath here, okay. on the bottom of it, is and actually where the pitman arm goes. So when this yeah. moves, it moves the pitman arm, which actually moves the steering linkage. All right. Eight. Pitman arm number nine. You get the last two since you weren't here. You get to take nine. Nine seven. What's that? C. Okay. Uh, in this drawing, what components move when the worm shaft is rotated? Uh, for nine, is it B, the sector shaft? Isn't it both? Both of them. The yeah. The ball nut moves. Mm -hmm. A and B. Both of them. Both of them. Yep. And number 10. What component helps isolate road forces and vibration from the steering shaft? Is it neither? I think it's the flexing. It's, it's the flexible coupling? Yep. 
Flexible couple of that one that helps isolate those portions. I thought that was a plate or something. It's on a... Toe plate. That's just, that just keeps the... Uh, uh, that just goes to the uh, firewall through the steering column. It, it allows the steering column to go through the car, right? So it's got to go from the inside of the car yeah. to the outside of the car. That toe plate just seals that area. It's 1460. Keeps road noise and stuff like that. 1469? Yes. And you read what it says under the picture? What page is uh, for number nine? Number nine, I don't know, 1474. I thought it was, a, I can't remember where I read it. What does the question say? In the drawing, what components move when a worm oh. shaft is Maybe it says a page before. <clears throat> huh? Yeah, it should be 1474. 74. the page before it. I don't know if it's in the text there, but it's certainly in the picture. You can see the sector shaft and the ball nut. They they both they both uh they both move when you turn the uh steering wheel. There is no animation for it in the slides. There's not a who? Animation for it in the slides. Look at how some pictures have little animations and everything. Uh, there's, the there's a ball nut right there, it. and yeah. this shaft has to move in order for these things to move. That's true. I thought it just rotated. Uh, yeah. Let's go back to this for a second. Okay, so the question says, this one, which components move when the worm shaft is rotated? Okay. The shaft is rotated. This is going to move, which is your ball nut, and the section shaft is going to move, which actually moves the steering linkage. Okay? When you turn the steering wheel, this moves, this moves, and this actually what connects to the steering gear or the pitman arm to your steering linkage. Okay? Okay. We did this, uh, I know we did not do this. Number one? Yeah, this is what you were thinking of for that yeah. other question. Connects to the floor, isolate road noise, keep dirt and wind and noise and. That's the toe plate. Cats and rats and elephants out of your car. <laughs> toe plate, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> what parts the function of the air tube between the two boots transfer air from one to the other? What adjustments being made here? Preload. Let's see, what page are we going to find that one on? 1476. 1476. All right. All right. Hmm. What is it? Over center Over adjustment. Over center adjustment. All right. Let's see if this one throws you. Which one? Hopefully it will. All of them are right. No. Well, they're all correct. None of them are safety requirements. So this is which they're asking you not. which one is not a safety requirement. Yeah. If you say all of them, you're saying none of them are safety. We know collapsible collapse problem. Wait. Hmm. Is it eight? Yeah. Bingo. It is A. Sector shaft is not a safety requirement. <coughs> the 
Mike Persephone has to have in order to work, but it's not a safety requirement. Okay. Circuit, the airbag inflation module is connected from the steering column to the steering wheel through which component? I've never seen any of these words. <coughs> What's that? Sensor? No, switch or sensor. It's a circuit. <clears throat> Anybody know what that one is? through that, so that's why I was wondering why that question was there. Let's see. It's, C. it's what? C. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Clock spring, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't see it in here, but that's why I wonder why that question's there, because it seemed like that question jumped the gun a little bit. Let's see, maybe it is in here, I don't know, I, I haven't seen it. Clock spring is what they call that. Should be somewhere in the airbag thing, which they don't cover too intensely here, but we will in another chapter. See that? You know what? Let me uh, let me see. Let me see if I have a page number here. It says it's on 1466. Looks like the very first page. It was spiral cables, electrical current. Is that what you call it? It's a circuit. It's a module. There's a clock spring recording. The spiral cable connects to the airbag module. Oh, yeah, 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 there it is. The Electrical cable. current is provided oh, to the airbag through a spiral cable, also known as a clock spring recording. Mm -hmm. Yep, so it is there. Okay. I have another question. Number nine on the previous one? Oh, the yeah. Ball I'm, I'm really confused. Because it says on page 1471, it says ball roller or needle bearings support the sector shaft and the worm gear shaft depending on the make and model of the gear assembly. And as the steering wheel is turned, the movement is transmitted through the steering gear to the arm attached to the bottom end of the pitman shaft. But I do see in figure 12019, it says, as the steering wheel is turned, the nut moves up or down on the thread, shown using a bolt to represent the worm gear and the nut representing the gear nut. So are they referring to the gear nut as the ball nut? Yes. And that's what moves up and down. But then it says the ball or roller or needle bearing supports <coughs> the sector shaft and the worm gear shaft. It mm -hmm. says it supports it on 1471. But then in that figure, it says it moves up and down. That's why I'm confused. Well, it has to have some sort of support to move. That's all they're saying. That's just what holds it together as it's moving. Because my brain is telling me that it just, it's as it's going, it just sits there and supports it so that the sector shaft moves. Okay. So look at the picture on 1475. 
1475. Okay, so as the steering shaft rotates, this is what rotates when you turn the steering wheel. Uh -huh. So as you rotate this, this moves this way or this way on these threads, uh -huh. just like a nut would if you if you put, moved it up and down on a bolt. Okay. And as it does it, it turns this, which is actually the steering linkage, yeah. which turns the wheels. Right, so this moves and not that nut. That nut moves? These are just recirculating balls. That's what they call it. These are the bearings that this that rides on the shaft that allow this to move back and forth without wearing out. But that ball nut does move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I have to see that. It, it has to. Yeah. It's like take think okay. of a bolt. Take a <laughs> bolt, put a nut on it, and screw it on, it moves one way, unscrew it, it moves the other way. It does the same thing. Okay, I got you. Okay. Thanks, Okay. Uh, where are we at? 128. And what question were we on? The coil. Clock spring six. coil? Six. We were on six, weren't we? Because we did clock spring of six. Worm gear payload is also called worm gear implant. Ecnisa sector lash is also known as gear lash. Right, but he may not be the only one. Plunge time. No, that was wrong. We're on six. I thought we were on seven. Never mind. <laughs> it's both. It is both. Good. This is the question I told you not to so mess up on. Hot joint. Because it would be easy to say plunging, plunging action. Well, it's a plunge joint. Most people get that question wrong. I'm trying to make sure you don't. Okay? okay. That will show up on the test Wednesday. Okay. You rotate the steering wheel. One half a revolution on a vehicle equipped with a 20 to 1 steering wheel. How many degrees will the tires rotate? C, 90 degrees. Uh, tires do not rotate 90, 90, rotate 90 degrees, otherwise they would go... Yeah, okay, this is what it said in the book. <laughs> it would be, um... Is this a math It problem? would be B, wouldn't it? Mm, nope. That's no, I'm going to find this. Because that's exactly what it said in the book. One half of one revolution. One half of one revolution, Mr. Emma. Equipped with steering gear. Like, do we have to do some math here or something? There's <laughs> a math way to do it, but it's I, think it's, I think it's A. It is A. Nine, Nine degrees, degrees is how far the tires will move. How do you get that answer? I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Because now I highlight that shit. Remember, it said if you rotate the steering wheel 20 degrees, the movie will move one degree. If it's 20 to 1. Oh. So let's see. It's, eight, 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 eight. it's going to be on 1471. I'm here now. When the steering wheels turn, the front wheels turn on their steering axis. If the steering wheels rotated 20, deg 20 degrees and results in the front wheels rotating 1 degree, then the steering, wheel, steering gear ratio is 20 to 1. Red is 20 to 1. So if that's 20 to 1, wouldn't that be 1 degree and not 9 degrees? If you move the steering wheel 20 degrees, the wheels will move one degree. Yeah. That's what that's where the 20 to 1 comes from. Yeah, but that's 20 to 1. So no, it says how many degree how far will the tires rotate if you turn the steering wheel at half a turn? What's a half a turn? 180 degrees. Right? Oh, one half of one revolution. Mm -hmm. One he turn rotates the steering wheel one half of one revolution. So he only does it halfway. Yeah. Right. So he's not doing a full 20. He's doing more of a 10. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got you. Okay? I got you, got you. Okay. What's the purpose of the adjuster not in this drawing? Here? This is the other type of steering gear, right? This is not a research. So just a rack and pinion gear preload. This is a rack and pinion, and so that C. is the gear preload nut, adjuster nut, okay? 
Sí. Ok. Number 10. Ok, he says, federal law requires all vehicles to be equipped with a collapsible steering column. That's right. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Hammer can be used to install a steering wheel. No. Awesome. <laughs> ok. All right. All right. Please. Um, I have a, a question. All right. On suspension. Um, I have a first car I was driving, and you need to get a suspension work on it. We got coils for it. Um, every time when we make a turn, it makes like a clanking noise, or when we drive, when we turn, we get the gas, it goes like clank. It makes like a clank noise on suspension. What, what did he do to it? Change the coil springs? What kind of car is it? It's a Scion DC. Okay. So you think the top loop, the bolt nut could be loose or something loose? It sounds like he left something loose. Yeah. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. I mean, obviously, without seeing it or driving it, it's hard to say, but that's what it sounds like. I would just retrace all of the steps to make sure, you know, you didn't forget something. You know? That's what it sounds like. Oh, right. Where are we at? Quiz. Oh, yeah. Back. Oh, yeah. In the book. In the book, right? In the book. Okay. Circuit, the airbag, inflation module connected to the steering column. Through the steering wheel. To, through a component called the clock spring. After removing the center nut on the steering wheel, you need a puller to get it off. Yep. The part that allows changes in angles is a universal joint. Rotation of the steering wheels causes which part to actually move in a conventional steering gear pitman arm. Yeah. Number five was nine degrees. What causes a variable ratio of steering to be able to change the ratio when the wheel is turned? D. The center tooth is longer, so it's D, change in length of the teeth on the sector gear. What was it? D for six. Recirculating balls are used in most conventional steering gears because they... Provide. Think about what recirculating steel balls would do. And that'll give you the answer. Reduce friction? Yep. Okay. Which conventional steering gear adjustment should be performed first? Preload? Norm gear preload, yeah. And let's see. Uh, where are we at? Nine. Oh, nine, yeah. Well, rack and pinion steering adjustments include... Uh, B? B, yep. Pinion bearing preload and rack support. Is that B? Yep. And number nine, I'm sorry, ten, we know transfer air from one boot to the other. Oh, right. I'm oh, sorry. Number seven in the book? C. Seven in the book. C, yeah. Eight? A. A. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have a question? No? Okay, time for one of these. Make sure you. Oh, this is the only test we can These I want you to answer just off of what you remember or what you can get. As always. When you're done, we'll go over them together and see how everybody did.
Tire sensors have like like something to let you know that you overfilled your tires. Does your what now? Shouldn't tires have like a tire sensor letting you know that you overfilled your tires? No. You know? Your tire pressure monitoring system will only alert you if the tire is underinflated, not over. Okay? If it's underinflated by 25% of what it's supposed to be, the light will come on. Shows a little picture of a little tire, amber light. Yeah, will not tell you if you have too much air in it. 
However, it has the capability to display the tire pressures on the on the on the driver information center. Mm -hmm. And obviously you know it that way, but yeah, it won't alert you though. Between the driver and the steering wheel dashboard. That should be pretty obvious, right? Um, what is the purpose of a flexible coupling in a steering system? Is it, um, is it C? Join the steering shaft and the steering gear? D. Yeah. Yeah. It was D? It, it also does help isolate the right direction. Yes, it does. Yep. So AC. I'm sorry? AC equal to D. D. Can it also be C? <laughs> What's that? Can it also be C or no? No. Damn. Wait a minute, what is number two? I'm confused. D. 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 Oh. Uh. Okay, three. What is the purpose of knee bolsters in the steering system? C? What's that? C. Cap. Yep. It is a safety issue. You can be able to have their back. So it's C? Yeah. Uh -huh. C. Safety standard. Where are they located? Right at the base of the strain column. So basically, it, it's what your knees would hit in the event of a front end collision. Okay. Now, what is the type of collapsible? See. I'm sorry, yeah. It is C, yeah. C. Yep. Five should be pretty obvious. Mechanism. Hey. Apple? Yeah, it really does. Yep, all it does is allow you to adjust the angle of the steering wheel. Through the purpose of the steering gear, of the steering gear in the steering system. D. D? Yes. Yep. Kind of really much from the steering wheel to the front wheels. What is the purpose of the variable ratio in most steering gears? Uh, A? Yep. Decrease the number of degrees of steering wheel must be rotated to move the front wheel. Yep. What is the most commonly used conventional steering gear? A? Conventional. Oh, man. Hmm. You were right if it just said what's the most commonly used steering gear. Awesome. Conventional or uh, circulating ball. It's A. Yeah. So it is A. Oh, <laughs> Purpose of the boots. Was A. C is B. B. A. A. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. How'd everybody do on that? I missed two. Six out of nine. How many? I got six right. Got six right. Yeah. I only missed two. I got seven right. Two. Two. How about you? Three. Three. How'd you do? Just three. Terrence, how'd you do? Just three. All right. Everybody did pretty good on that, right? All right. Uh, let's go ahead and take a morning break now. We'll come back to the next chapter. Come back at uh, five after, so 15 minutes.